book of Revelation, uh, chapter 17. I've prepared um, a study for invite people to study with me and learn this uh, incredible book. Um, a book that comes with a blessing. And uh, so I'm going to have a prayer and ask uh, for some help and a blessing. Gracious Father, I pray and I ask thee, I ask you, thee Lord Jesus, that you would uh, be with us as we study. As anyone, anybody who joins me in, in this study, that you would uh, open our eyes, open our minds and understanding to your revelation and your holy word. Lord, I pray you'll help me uh, do my best as I go through the things I've prepared and the things I'd like to consider and share. I pray anyone listening will be um, edified and the Holy Spirit will be with us to teach us that which is and uh, teach us that which isn't. I pray that I may be clear of my own conjecture and uh, your word will teach us and um, open our understanding to this uh, wonderful book. We thank you, Father, and pray. And I ask thee in, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Right, to, I've written um, just some things to consider uh, in this particular chapter, which is chapter 17, and it's a very revealing chapter. And there's a lot, a lot in this uh, chapter. A lot of the things I've learned have uh, been from other people's studies. And I can't really accredit to who originally um, revealed and uh, expounded on the book of Revelation. Because there's been so many studies throughout church history. And we've got so much hindsight today and so many studies to investigate. And uh, there's so many diverse opinions. And uh, I'm just going to give what I, I've learned from that and whittled down and give my own uh, thoughts. And uh, so I, I don't claim to be an expert or claim to understand everything, especially not in, uh, in Revelation, but I've got the gist of uh, the basics. And so that's what I'm going to do my best to share. Right, the beast. Now this is um, revealing of the beast and the the mother of harlots. Um, and uh, the, the uh, Antichrist coming forth and the Ten Kings. So the things I'd like to consider is the beast what the beast is because um reading through the old testament there's a uh, it's threefold really i've discovered it's it first it's um a head of a nation or a kingdom that is evil that has the uh devil inside their life in overtaking them or possessed by them or influenced by them they're influenced by the devil so that's one important factor. Uh, another part of the beast is referred to as his kingdom or, the, or their kingdom. And the beast is also the beast is the final antichrist, which was uh, which John termed of this uh, person, of this uh, devil. So there's the head, the... Um, the head of and his kingdom and those who serve him because the word of God says anyone who doesn't acknowledge that uh, Jesus come in the flesh is uh, the spirit has a, has the spirit of Antichrist so it's all the people that um, are in that kingdom all the citizens of that kingdom that are ruled over by that head so that's uh, that's another uh, thing that that needs to be considered to so the beast as the nation or the kingdom, the actual head of that kingdom. 
and the final beast is the beast the antichrist and the beast is satan or the devil possessing the, the person the component who is the beast who has a nation so that's um uh, something to consider because it can get a bit confusing when when you read uh, when you read the beast it's not always clear if it's referring to a person or or the kingdom of of that person and um there's many uh, names given to the um antichrist the beast uh, in in the old testament like um I've written a few down, the Assyrian, the Prince, the Fierce King, the Little Horn. Uh, that's, to, that, that's just to name a few. There's other names which I didn't seek out, but that's just a few names. And Babylon. Um, Babylon is actually a nation. It's a spiritual nation. So... As I read through Revelation, we cover what that entails in in, in prophecy today. Um, I'll start with reading a Psalm, Psalm two, because I think this is goes uh, hand in hand with with this uh, chapter. Why do the heathen rage, rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he vex, speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise that thou <coughs> be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and he perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed will they put their trust in him. So there is a prophecy there, um, a promise to the Lord from the Father, I believe. Uh, speaking of the Son, speaking of the Lord Jesus, through the through the Lord Jesus, and revealing at the beginning of a conspiracy, and we're gonna as we read through the chapter, we see that that conspiracy evident. Um, if we go to Revelation one, just to give some an introduction to the the, the Revelator, the Lord Jesus and his revelation and in the beginning uh, chapter 1 uh, verse 8 uh, the Lord's speaking I am the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty so there we have in verse 8 Spirit of the Lord speaking the word of the Lord and the spirit of prophecy, which is in, we, we just read that in chapter um, Psalm 2, as a spirit of prophecy, it's applicable. Let's turn to verse 19 and 20. Write the things which, this is uh, the Lord speaking to John, who was on the Isle of Patmos, when he received the, the word of the Lord and the um, revelation. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. 
the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So the Lord's revealing to John to reveal things from the, pa from the past uh, which thou hast seen or what she's seen in the revelation, beg your, I beg your pardon. The things which are current, the currently and then the things which shall be hereafter. So there's an order, the things which John saw first, which is his current day, and then the thing, things which were, should follow that. So that's the revealing of the prophecy, of the revelation. So the, the first part was, if you studied revelation, the first part is the, the church, speaking to the church, then the unfolding of the church in, in prophecy in time. Um, we're not going to study that. Um, right, let's just read the blessing. Uh, verse 1 and 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So there's a, a blessing attached to um, this uh, revelation, this book of revelation. So I pray that, it, that um, that we each receive a blessing. Anyone who's studying along the book of Revelation receives a blessing from their study. Right, I'm going to re start reading through the chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels, so this is right in the middle of um, part of the church has been um, taken up into heaven. The period of judgment and wrath, the tribulation, is uh, in this part of Revelation is revealed. So this is it. This is not now. This is to come, and it's speaking of that time to come in 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 the uh, period of Revelation, or a, a, or an outline of um, and focusing on Babylon and the powers and the beast. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So, she, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So I believe beast here is um, a kingdom of, of like-minded uh, people, of, of a system, a nation, or nations, is the beast full of um, a woman sit, sit upon a scarlet coloured beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and a woman, woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her head was was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So the woman sitting on the beast is um, sitting on a sitting on a kingdom, a beast, and uh, upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots abominations of the earth and uh, that is um, the the Roman Vatican powers 
and I just want to consider what is a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication what is in that cup and if you study the history of the Roman church all the activities there's a lot of um, a vileness a lot of um, perverseness a lot of paedophilia, sodomy murder assassination genocide just all wickedness and um, <clears throat> if you know anything about Vatican II and the ecumen ecumenical movement and that's the World Council of Churches and all the churches together all the harlots and that's what it's referring to so the, the beast is a kingdom of all those all those uh, conglomerates, all those harlots, and the mother being the Roman Catholic Church, and the Pope, run by the Pope, who's a false prophet, who's the false prophet. Um, <clears throat> the the um, Evangelical Alliance, there's um, the World Evangelical Alliance, and there's the UK evangelical alliance or the which is ecumenism which is all joining together in it but not in a spiritual sense as as um, one in the body of christ but in in a counterfeit sense trying to imitate um what they believe is the uh, true ecumenism which is a false ecumenism because it's uniting with this uh, yoking all the, all these um, systems, all these harlots, to the mother of all harlots. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So the Lord revealed that um, this system, this beast, this Babylon, this kingdom, and those who sit on it, have um, killed all the saints so from the inception of the gospel and the and the bride the church has been responsible for the blood of the saints and, and the martyrs of jesus all those who died for the lord the apostles um all those who um went through that period in in church history that the uh, uh, suffered horrible deaths in the, um, you know, like treated, thrown to the lions, burnt, boiled alive, tortured, horrible things, absolutely horrible things. And this is, and she's responsible for all of that. And that um, goes throughout all history. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and the beasts that carry of her, which have the seven heads and ten horns. The beast thou sawest was, the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, so that's referring to the antichrist i believe and uh and the devil taking over the antichrist and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition so it will possess a person and that person will go into perdition that person will be in part of the conspiracy to overthrow the lord and and all the all the people of the lord all the saints and the seed and they shall dwell and those and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is so the beast that has always been there the power of the the components of all the devil's always been there the um the powers have always been there but they've not been in power so that that it was it was in power once and is not and then it went underground and yet is so it is still is still in power and here is the mind which have wisdom the seven heads 
are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now that can be identified because uh, Rome, in the boundaries of Rome are seven hills or seven mountains which uh, are in Rome and the uh, Vatican City is part of Rome on the edge of Rome I believe and the seven, I've wrote down the seven hills <clears throat> and this is um, in Rome so there's Aventine, Aventine uh, Carline, Carline to give my pr pronunciation Capitoline Esquiline uh, Palatine, Quinoline, and Vimin Viminal. So there is actually seven mountains in Rome, and so that's quite incredible that um, it's been revealed and identified where this beast, where this beast is, where this mother of harlots is. And there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come uh, and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is is the eighth and is of the seventh and going into perdition now, there's a lot to consider here and it's very this is very difficult I, I'm stuck with this part and there are seven kings, five are fallen. So I believe that those seven kings are, or the, f um, are, will be like world lead, world emperors, who will like if we start with Nebuchadnezzar, he was a golden head in the prophecy of Daniel, and he was the first king. And I and I try to count, um, just from memory, <coughs> people who've in history have tried to take over the world and I could uh, I might be wrong here but after Nebuchadnezzar was Alexander the Great and there was Julius Caesar so that's three and there could have been others um, and Napoleon Bonaparte he was an he was an emperor the first emperor of France who um, nearly conquered the world and he fell Julius Caesar fell, Alexander the Great fell, Nebuchadnezzar fell. Now, <clears throat> then there was Adolf Hitler, and he fell. So that's five. So perhaps that's it's something along those lines. So, well, I know it's along those lines, but I don't know if that's the identity of the kings. But there's been five kings revealed that have fallen. Um, now that is more applicable today because the revelations for that time. So at that time there would have been five kings that have fallen <coughs> and one is. So what is the one that is? Well the one that is I believe is the one that's always on the throne which is the Pope. So he's the one that is and one is. And the other is not yet come. So there's a uh, there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is, so that's six. And then and the one is, is always on, is, is constantly there, because he's been there throughout the ages, from the time of Christ, from and time of the apostles, the time of the saints, the time of the church age, there's always been, always been the Pope. And perhaps Constantine was uh, one of those kings. But I, I'm not sure of the exact identity. That's some, that's something that needs to be really, really studied. But I think the one is, and one is, is the Pope, and because he's always in power, he's always in his seat. Well, there's always a Pope in in office, and I think that's what the one is, and one is, is the office of the Pope. So there'd be five kings that had fallen, and the and the Pope, because he's there today. He was there before, and he's there. He'll be there in that time. And the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. 
And the ten horns which I saw is the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So that's the coming forth of the the world order where there be ten kings who give their power to one and uh, he will be the antichrist the beast with the beast the one who goes into perdition in verse 8 coming out of the bottomless pit so considering this is what I've been considering so there's eight really but this the eighth is of the seventh so that's a, a bit of a mystery now is that a blood relation and the ten kings were given power so I've considered a few things I've considered uh, that the ten kings will, will um, they have not received no kingdom as yet so they're not in power but they're there so I think what will, what I considered is that, that a new because it's a conspiracy and what will be fought up in the hearts of this conspiracy will be a, a new world order kind of thing. And ten kings will, con uh, as a conglomeracy, elect someone to be the head. And I think the first one will be the seventh. And of, of the seventh, the, an office kind of thing. So the first office will hold will not be the Antichrist, it will be the one of following, because he's, he's the eighth of the seventh. Or it will be the same thing, but it will be a son of the seventh. Um, now, people have said it's the EU states. It may not be the EU states, because the EU might collapse. Nobody knows, because it's... a. Uh, not yet happened and it will happen in the uh, Great Tribulation period so it's to come so the church we're not looking for the Antichrist we're, we're looking for the the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and uh, take us take us home take us in take us into heaven so at that time the EU might might dissolve and there may be something else in its place, you know, it might reform itself, it might break down and it, and then this may come forward with ten kings and they put one man on the throne. And then from after the second one, which will be the eighth, will be the Antichrist. That's a possibility. Or it may be the ten nation states of um, the European Union and they put a man on the throne. And, and the false prophet will be the one that is. And uh, that will be... That, that's the Pope. And then he, he will uh, support this uh, leader. He will, he will, you know, he will worship and claim that, that this is the guy. He will be like a false witness, a false prophet. This is like a bit like John the Baptist. Um, bringing in the preparing the way for this antichrist or this system so that's something that, that I've considered but are we ever going to know I don't I don't know I'm just considering that that's a possibility that um, he will come from an office rather than the person these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them so there's a conspiracy again, so they're plotting to, for this to, to happen. And, and the components are already on the earth now, the conspiracy is already on the earth. It's just how is it going to manifest in that time? For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the, where the horse sitteth are people, peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So these ten kings are going to hate the Pope and the religious systems of the world and they're going to burn burn them with fire which is a 
which is a righteous judgment considering uh, that all these kings <coughs> all these kings have been dependent throughout throughout the ages and they and the whore has been riding on 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 the back of them but they wouldn't they wouldn't have prospered without her but they despise her they despise the religion and the the pomposity of it i suppose and they're going to overturn it they're going to uh, stab it in the back and they're going to kill it and burn it and pro possibly all of the harlots with it so that they're going to be going after the false christians and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world when they behold the beast. So when they realise that, you know, they're going to wonder why they're not safe. Well, we believed in Jesus. We, uh, we're we looking for your, we're trying to build your kingdom. We're looking for your coming, your second coming. But they missed the mark. They're like the foolish and they're going to get destroyed by the Ten Kings and the Antichrist and they're going to turn on the whore and burn it with fire for the Lord God hath put in the hearts to fulfil his will and to, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the word of God shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth and that great city is Rome as it said in the beginning the seven hills so it will be uh, Vatican City so in Rome and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reign over the kings of the earth so there we have it so there's the things I w wanted to consider and with the 7th and the 8th it's either a blood relation or possibly an office of power and that uh, so when the new world order if we can call it that comes into being it won't be the first one it'll be the one after it the second office because it's of the eight even if he is the eighth and is of the seventh and go with him to perdition and go with off trying to conquer the the lord trying to capture israel and dominate the whole world get rid of the jews kill all the christians and go after the saints the real saints not the uh, false church but the the people who um, believe in jesus and will be scattered will probably be uh, running or hiding and uh, they'll be hunted down and then the uh, Antichrist will go after that with all his powers. We'll all gather around, um, gather around Jerusalem. So I wanted to consider those things. And one more thing before I close that I'd like to consider is uh, not identifying the Antichrist, but just uh, identifying what type of person he will be. Because there's a lot of speculation. Is he? Is he? Because uh, he's called the Assyrian. People said, oh, he's an Arab. And, and other people say, no, he's, I believe he'd be a Jew. Well, I believe he'd be a Jew, but I'm, I'm just cons wondering. If we, if you look at the... Um, in, in the Mormon... If you know, I don't know if, any, if you, anyone's aware of this. But in the Mormon church, in the, the cult system, and now, now there's people inside it who know it's not... It's not a, the, the church of, of Christ, what they claim it to be. They, there's people inside who, who know that it's a, it's a con. Just like people in uh, the Roman Catholic Church, they know it's a con. Just like the Ten Kings of the Earth know it's a con. They know it's uh, false. And they know it's to deceive people. And um, in the Mormon Church, there, there was a split. And there was two churches of jesus christ the latter-day saints formed and uh, that was to do when joseph smith the first prophet the first false prophet died and then the person who took his place was brigham young and, and of course there's a division down the middle and um another church formed claiming to have the authority 
and leaving the original one, the predominant one, uh, behind and the other one went into the wilderness. But personally, I be studying it through, I believe it was calculated, it was done on purpose, it was to have a place where the people of the first one can go and secretly breed with people and have lots of wives and concubines in the second one and, and it, when you study it through that's what actually took place so a lot of the um, authorities of the first one in the public they say oh we don't live polygamy anymore but what, what they were actually doing was practicing with their fingers crossed practicing polygamy in the second one and then you think oh that was deliberate then so what what I was considering is that some of these authorities, some of these leaders, some of these influences in the world powers will have certain wives, choose certain wives and know what the what the seed are going to be like. So they would um, go and breed. And if you think of um, any, if you know anything about um, a bit about um, Obama's history, how he, he was kind of raised in the wilderness and come on the scene in power as this hero and I'm not saying he's the Antichrist but I'm, I'm just looking at the type and how people in, in world influence uh, sponsored him so I, I'm wondering if it's a similar sort of thing that uh, this uh, beast will be is something like that so there's a people of influence of bloodline and then they choose a certain wife in in secret and breed, and then and then they and then they set the circumstance for that seed, uh, like an orphan kind of thing or manufacture his upbringing, so they can t put their arm around him and raise him up as as a a key player in the world, and kind of like choose choose his life before he's even aware, before he's even born. And and I and I think that was uh, I've seen a similar pattern in the Mormon Church where they uh, go away and breed and uh, you know have lots of wives. I think there's more to it than just their lusts. I think it's um, a, a more calculated, and then they can bring those people on the scene. Nobody knows where they come from or who their father is, or 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 they got adopted parents or or raised in a family that they believe are their parents but perhaps only one of them's a parent and uh, they are cultivated to be uh, raised up to be world leaders so I was thinking of the Antichrist maybe he's some a component like that so there's a um, he, he they could be if you if you consider Hitler he was half Jewish and then so I don't know about all the other kings, the five kings, but Hitler was half Jewish, so maybe the Antichrist will be half Jewish and half Arab. So he he'll be um, he'll appeal to two peoples, the Jews and the Arabs, and perhaps he poses a Christian, so that's free. So he'll be all free, so he can unite all three groups bring them together in a, un a kind of fake unity so that's a, the, the last thing I wanted to consider perhaps he's uh, both Jew and he's both Arab so depending on what how he's appearing to the public he could appear Arabic or he could appear Jewish or to Christians he, he will appear as a Christian so perhaps he's um, half Jew half Arab and uh, a professing Christian, something like that. So I'm going to leave there and uh, hope this has been uh, interesting and edifying. Anyone who's new to the book of Revelation, I hope that shared some something of use and something of help. And some people who are who have already studied the book and um, understand the book, I, I pray there's something in there for food for thought and further study so um, I'm going to continue to study this book out and uh, learn the depths of this um, this study 
I might do a part on the Old Te Testament prophecies of, of the Antichrist and look at the com look look at him a bit deeper because there's a lot of revealed about him in Daniel and Isaiah and Zechariah and I'll probably set, see if I can search out a few other places where he's mentioned. So I'd like to close there in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.